I'm here with John Kenalopoulos. You know, John, it's, it's, always, it's always a joy speaking with uh, you, and I'm, I'm excited to talk about what you're going to be talking about now. Uh, we're going to be talking about cross-linking. Now, cross-linking is exciting from a, 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 a treatment for keratoconus, for ectasia, uh, post-LASIC, post but that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Yes, yes. It's... Uh it's always a pleasure to speak to you, Josh. And uh, what I have to share with you is some really, really interesting clinical data. We've all lo known, in, especially in Europe, cross-linking as a means to establish ectasia halt. And that has been published. We use it clinically all the time. And we've heard a lot of people talk about disease regression with cross-linking. Well, there's few, very few diseases on the, on, on, in humans that regress. What we're actually seeing is a crude refractive byproduct of the cross-linking process. Well, we, we have been fortunate to be working with a pilot study with Avidro, the KXL2 device, and I am a consultant for Avidro. And with this device, you can actually uh, customize the amount of cross-linking, the exact location, on topographic assisted patterns. Huh. And we're able, by um, applying these patterns on a virgin cornea, to create within the cornea significant cross-linking differentials. So a, a virgin non-pathological cornea, exactly. a virgin normal cornea. A cornea that has not been operated. And we're able to show that by creating this very significant cross-linking differentials, meaning an area of the cornea that's uh, cross-linked with 20 joules, this is four times the Dresden protocol in energy, and an area next to it that is not cross-linked, and that through a gel-like effect in the cornea, and this, this work is really um, significantly aided by BJ Dupes uh, at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation with computer models, this shift in the cornea is able to create refractive changes. So you, you is are, well. This is interesting stuff, John. This is interesting. When when I think of ablation. Uh, for myopia, what I'm thinking uh, of is laser patterns that produce flattening. And since cross-linking in this context is producing localized flattening too, are the patterns similar to the the laser patterns that we would use with an, with an eczema? Yeah, it, it's, it's an excellent question. We're very early on in this work, and um, we cannot uh, even claim that we're getting eczema-like results. Uh, but we're able to get, and I presented this at the ISRS meeting Friday morning, uh, very uh, precise optical zone, six millimeters, for instance, flattening and steepening of the cornea by applying these patterns. Um, and these, pa these are transepithelial cross-linking treatments. So these patients walk in and out with an eye that looks completely unoperated. Um, and with these specific patterns, we can achieve two to three diopters steepening of the cornea, two to three diopters flattening of the cornea and toric changes on the cornea. Huh. Now, topographically, how, how regular do these patients look post-op? Uh, they look extremely regular. If you look at the topographies, you will think that this eye was operated by eczema. Huh. It has a very precise um, demarcation line between steep and flat. And of course, we haven't looked into transition zone yet, into tapering the effect. These were patients that had one treatment. These are poorly sighted eyes. These were the initial feasibility studies, so we can talk about visual acuity and best uh, spectral corrected. We can only talk in terms of uh, uh, cornea imaging, and we're imaging the cornea with all the available modalities to be able to better assess that. Now, having, having said that, I mean, obviously, the $64,000 question is, what is the duration of the effective treatment? Another brilliant point. Um, we have maximum follow-up almost five months now, and there appear, appears to be a significant dropout the first week, but after the first week, these results appear to be extremely stable. Uh, and it may be that the weak uh, shift is an epithelial shift that we also are able to image through uh, anterior segment OCT. Uh, of course, in order to talk about stable refractive results, we want to have one year, two years, et cetera. Yeah, well, of course. Uh, uh, John, this is really, really interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff. Th this is really exciting, and I just want to underline the fact that I, I uh, endeavored within this project extremely skeptical uh, because I was not a big believer of transepithelial cross-linking. 
Um, but now looking back at all my own cross-linking patients, and I've treated over 3,000 patients so far in Europe, uh, I can see the crude refractive, excuse the word crude, the crude refractive effect that cross-linking has parallel to it stabilizing the cornea. And we've been doing this all these years internationally, but we have not been able to titrate it and use it in a way that it will have a noticeable refractive effect. Really interesting. John, thank you very much for spending time with us today. Oh, you're quite welcome.